Hi there, I'm Andrew Bunnell, and today let's take a quick look at RC circuits. An RC circuit means a resistor and a capacitor. They could be in parallel or in series. Here they're in series. Actually, with the little switch thrown, they're in series and in parallel at the same time, but that's a little funny a side note. Uh, we're also going to look at the, the we're going to look at the the voltage over the time, how resistors and capacitors affect the voltage over a time period. A little later in the experiment, we'll review multimeter uncertainty, uh, which is a little bit different than the uncertainty you've learned in the past. So to start out, you can just click reset and you would set the first one to five, the second one to five. Oh, and if you can't get it exactly five, that's okay. It's some, sometimes these little switches are a little hard and then this one to two volts and you'd click play and let it run for a while. Next, you'd set the capacitor to something small like one and let it play, and, and you're going to be noting and sketching the, the graphs and noting the times. Then you'll do a uh, final graph for the discharging well, you, where you will set the resistor up to a high value, like the maximum 9.8. After that, you'll switch over to a charging state. Actually, let's just say it, it actually says just to click reset and click charge, and then click play and watch it for about 10 seconds. And... Um, so there's five, six, seven, eight, and we're close to 10. We'll get there, nine, 10. Okay, so now we can see that this black line right here, it goes towards zero, and this red line up here goes toward, and if I click on it, it's about nine. And you can assume that there's a nine volt battery here charging and charging this circuit. Now, all nine volt batteries aren't exactly the 9 volts. In fact, if you ever measure one, you'll see that it's slightly higher than 9 volts. And they slowly decrease in voltage as the battery loses charge over time as those chemical reactions take place. Now to set up this applet, you got to choose your own settings. So I'm going to click reset, charge, and we're going to initially set this at zero. And I'm going to just do one and one for my resistor, one and a half for my capacitor. And then it says to click these three buttons over here. And to start out, we're just setting up the applet and taking data. And then later, we're going to look at closer at these numbers and what the uncertainty is of each of these. So you'll record those numbers. You're going to go ahead and um, calculate what tau is. And right now, my tau is roughly 1 times 1.5. And so that's 1.5. So I'm going to watch this uh, for about six seconds. I'm going to go ahead and click play. And there's three, four, five, and six. And so there's about six seconds, but I forgot to do one thing. I'm going to come down here, and I was also supposed to change the stride to six. And if you notice when I did that, it actually changed my table automatically for me. Okay, so now we can copy our data. Control A, Control C, and I already have an Excel spreadsheet open. And this one's a little bit more complicated, but that's okay, we'll get to it. We'll come over here, control V, and you'll type in what each of the things in. And this is voltage, oh no, this is time, and that's in seconds. And then this one is voltage resistor, and that's in volts. And this is voltage capacitor, and this is um, also volts. And then finally, this is current, and that's amps. Oh, capital, somehow my cap lock got stuck on. Okay, amps. Now to start out, we're gonna we're gonna model the uh, the velocity, or sorry, the voltage of the resistor over time. But we need to make a calculation sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on another sheet and hit uh, rename, uh, rename, and hit calculations. And you're supposed to really rename this other sheet data, rename data. Okay, so we get our calculations sheet, and we're gonna have our uh, item, and then we'll have our value, and then we'll have our percent error percent. And so I'm going to say error of the percent, and then I'm going to say the error plus digit. And then finally our error total. Okay, so the first thing I go back to my, um, go back, I didn't write them down, but you're supposed to write them down. Uh, so you could have just went back to your um, I'm going to make that one a little smaller, and that didn't work quite like I was hoping to. So let's do that and pull this one over, and 
I'm just going to minimize that for a second. And uh, this is all messy again. Okay, there we go. So we got our first, we got our resistor. Oh, and I forgot one thing over here, units. And that would be ohms. No, this is actually kill ohms on our little chart. And so our value is 0.992 for me. And don't forget, you're supposed to do your own. Uh, and then our capacitor and our voltage, which is really our battery. And then we're going to have to calculate tau and 4 times tau. Okay, my capacitor says 1.51, and then my battery says 9.21. And just to make sure I don't mix it up, I'm going to uh, pull up the pull up the um, the sheet again, and I'm going to talk just briefly about a multimeter. So a multimeter has electrical components, and these electrical components they're manufactured and manufacturing can't make exactly perfectly perfect components so for example in this dial there might be a 100 ohm resistor that this dial is attached to and that that resistor might have a one or a two percent uncertainty and so there's a little bit of uncertainty there now the range itself so this one doesn't have different ranges other than the amps over here the range itself might have um has a, an uncertainty, but then the measurement itself also has an uncertainty. And so you have this little bit of a compound uncertainty right here. So this is the 1% plus 1% plus, uh, plus 1 for the volts, and that's the 1 in the last digit as it's read. This is the 5% plus 4. Well, capacitors are harder to measure. And then 2% plus 5 uh, for the resistor measurements. So let's put those, let's put those in. So I'm going to pop the Excel sheet back up so that we can still see our numbers. And the first one for our resistor is going to be 2%. So that's going to be equal that value times it by 0 0.02. And I'm going to scroll and make it just a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. Now the capacitor, oh, sorry, plus our 5 in our last digit. Our last digit was a 2, so I'm going to do plus 0 0.005. I didn't really need the plus. Okay, now this next one, capacitors are harder to measure, so it's 5% equals to that number times it by 0 0.05 and then there's a four in the last digit and the last digit here is a one or in the hundreds so i'm going to do 0 0.04 okay next the battery is is easier to measure one percent plus one volt so that's going to equal to that times it by 0 0.01 and then this next one is going to be equal to 0 0.01 because our last digit was in the hundredth place. So the error total is just simply those two numbers added together. And I can copy that down. I forgot to put in the units. This is millifarads and this is volts. Okay, so now we need to, we, we have to round our values accordingly. And so we're gonna decrease the digit a little bit. Here we also have to decrease the digit a little bit. And here we also have to decrease the digit. There we go. Now four times, our tau is just simply our resistor times our capacitor, so I'm just going to use our spreadsheet equals that times that, okay. And I'm going to decrease the digit a little bit. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what the uncertainty is. Okay, so the uncertainty is now is equal to that. Do you remember this formula? Is equal to the square root in SQRT. And then I have two things I'm multiplying, so I'm going to do the first one, quantity squared, plus the second one, quantity squared, and then I'm going to close off the brackets, and then I'll do the ratios. The first ratio is going to be the resistor divided by the, the value, the uncertainty, and then the capacitor uncertainty divided by the value. Okay, so now I know how far I need to round. So I need to take those two and round them a little bit more. Now this is going to be four times equals four times our value. Oops, not power, that one. And then what is four times... What is four times our uncertainty? Well, four is just a scalar, so we can just simply do this is equal to four times this value right here. Now, what are the units for this? Oh, if that rounding, we can round this one one more too. What are the units for this? Well, it's seconds. It's a time constant. Okay, so now we can use these values uh, to have our expected values for our, our battery and our tau. Now, 
because exponential functions are difficult to decay, it's good to have these values um, to start out to fit our data. Now, there are some of these values that may or may not um, be useful. I'm sorry, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, um, okay, control C, and what am I really trying to say? Okay, so one other thing is we copy down the uncertainty, and we double check at the very bottom that the uncertainty lines up just right. Okay. So, for example, when we're fitting, we don't actually need 4 tau. 4 tau is so that that's a good amount of data for an exponential fit, but we don't need 4 tau when we're uh, doing this fit. Um, one easy way to do this is we can just simply equals and come over here and to our calculations. And so the first one was the battery, enter, and we can now do our expected tau. And then finally we can do our um, B expected, so that's going to be equals to um, our battery. Now, now, because exponential functions decay really quick, our where we measured may not equal our actual battery. Uh, it might equal um, might not equal our actual battery. It might be a little bit higher, a little bit lower. So we don't really need to do a z-score for our battery. Also, we expect this to decay to zero if we waited forever, but it, it might not decay to zero. There might be, with how we measure this uh, system, it might not quite decay to zero. So, oops, B expected was actually zero. Um, that's, B is not there. <laughs> battery, it's our, our offset. A is our battery value right there. Okay, so now you can click Reset Formulas, and we can iterate fit a couple times singly, and then we can just do iterate fit times 10 times 10, and we'll have a pretty good value there. Now we're going to round these numbers, and these easy ways to select both cells at the same time and decrease the digit. And if you notice here that our B fit should be zero, but it didn't quite decay to zero, and we see this in the, the physical lab too, is that our data, there might be a little bit of residual offset of a voltage that's different than zero. But like I said, we're really concerned with this one. Um, so I'm going to say equals, and I'm going to go click on my error value over here for my tau, which is right there. Your values are going to be a little bit different. Now I can do a z-score right here. Now the z-score is going to be a little bit different because we got two values with two uncertainties. So that's going to be equal ABS, and our first value minus our second value parentheses divided by, do you remember how, what it is? It's the square root of the sum of the squares. So SQRT, and I'm going to do that one, quantity squared, plus that one, quantity squared, and close off the bracket. Now this time I don't have to do ratios. Um, this time I could just click the uncertainties. Oops, I got it slightly in the wrong spot. Oh, I still can't quite click it. Oh, there we go. And it's in the right spot. And it looks like I have a error in my uh, formula. Okay, so oh, I needed one more, one more parenthesis there. Okay, so I got a really good z-score, and hopefully you get a good z-score too. Next, we're going to repeat this. Uh, don't forget to change the title and the y-axis and the x-axis. For example, the x-axis is time, and the units are seconds. And what's this? This is the voltage across the resistor, and, and yeah. Okay, so we're going to now rename this one. We're going to rename this one uh, VR. And then we're going to make a copy of this uh, sheet. Duplicate, move or copy. It's control click or right click, create a copy. And we're going to rename this one, and this, this one will be VC. Now we can use pretty much this exact same spreadsheet and everything, but we just have to copy this over. So I'm scrolling back there and Command Shift down or Control Shift down and Control C or Command C. Come over here, right there, paste that. Now notice how it's 0, 0, 0 0.01. 
Um, I forgot to mention one thing earlier that if you add like an extra row of zero that you would have to um, delete that row. And even if it measures zero, um, there's still the uncertainty of how it measures. So that's why we have that little bit of an extra digit there. Okay, now we're looking at this and we see that it's opposite. We see that it's opposite. And so we can actually carefully rearrange this formula up here. And, and you don't actually have to do this in your sheet. But um, what, how this formula rearranges us now is it's going to be a 1 minus the exp to k. And then the b actually gets rolled into the a. And so, so this b actually becomes this 1 right here. And so how does that change our formula? Notice how the a would go in and become negative. Oh, let me hit. So the a would go to the, the, the offset, and the a would go also to the negative. And so we actually have to make this, make this a expected and negative that value. And then our b expected is going to be equal to negative our battery value, b3. And so that's where it comes up to that voltage. So our b is our offset where it ends up. And our A expected is how it curves with our time constant, or where it starts. Actually, it's where it starts from. It starts from negative 9 from our end. Ah, I'm making so much mistakes this morning. Sorry, it's early. Okay, so now that I've done that, I can reset formulas. And notice it actually follows the curve nicely. And so I'm going to go ahead and iterate fit 10 times, 20 times, 30 times. I double check to see my values are all there. My z-score is already calculated. So I'm good to go. Now, part of the reason why we're getting good z-scores is because of the uncertainties of our measured values are actually bigger. Remember, we're using, we're using a, we're simulating a, a real device, and this real device has manufactured systematic errors. And so we just want to make sure we're within error when we use our error like we did. The final part of this experiment is we're going to do the same. Um, we're going to do the same fit for the voltage of the capacitor, but now we have to start with voltage across the capacitor. And so I'm going to drag this over here all the way. Sure, why not? I'm going to drag it all the way to 3. I still have my stride at 6. I'm going to play this until I see about 6 seconds worth of data, so i got to get that one up there too. Let's see, i got to show graphs. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and click play. And I'm going to get ready to pause it when there's about six seconds worth of data. Four, five, and six. And then control A, control C. I'm going to come back over to my data tab. I'm going to paste it in here, control V. And now I'm just going to copy these headers, control C, control V. And right here I'm going to say VC is equal to three volts. Oops, I should have done a capital R. Capital. Okay, now we can move or copy this sheet, create a copy, and I'm going to say right there in that little parentheses, I'm just going to change that to 3 volts, and that's where we started. Now back to our data, we're going to highlight this again. Now notice how it didn't start at 0 because we started at 3 volts across the capacitor. And I hope you choose your own settings, Control c and coming back over to here and pasting in here. Okay. Now, if you look closely at your graph, you should see that it's shifted up a little bit. Now, with what I talked about before, you should be able to quickly and easily remember which number you should have to change. And so this is where this is where it ends up. And so that's our B value. Now, how are we going to shift this up? Well, we're going to subtract well, in this case, because it's negative, we're going to add the, the initial charge across the capacitor. And so I had 3 volts of charge across that capacitor. Now when I click Reset, you'll see that the line, oops, shifted down. Why did that happen? Uh, because of this number came from that number. <laughs> so, sorry, plus 3. How I typed it in my sheet. Uh, okay, now when I click Reset, now it lines up. So I used a couple too many formulas. I could have sh just should have just typed in the numbers. And I can iterate fit 10 times again. And notice there. And now I see another good z-score. 
Don't forget to edit these titles. And with that, that's about it for the experiment. Don't You need to turn in these three graphs and describe what they mean and, and what components you used. And, and don't forget to follow that gray box at the end. And that's about it for today. Thanks for watching.